Hey, can you please stop telling Houston that we have a problem? Dear Tim and Moby, Who was Isaac Newton? Sincerely, Dylan. Sir Isaac Newton was an English physicist, mathematician, astronomer, and natural philosopher. Well, you don't get a reputation as one of the most influential figures in the history of science by being good in just one subject. Newton was born in 1643 in the town of Woolsthorpe by Costerworth. That's where he would do some of his most famous work, like helping invent calculus and coming up with his theory of gravity. But before that, he almost became a farmer. At age 17, Newton was away studying at school when his mother ordered him back home to learn the farming trade. Luckily, the school's headmaster convinced his mother to send Newton back. After finishing with high marks, he enrolled at Trinity College at the University of Cambridge, where he studied for the next four years. The school shut down in 1665 because of an outbreak of plague, so after getting his degree, Newton went home to continue his scientific explorations. Yeah, that's where he saw the famous apple. According to legend, Newton was sitting under a tree when an apple fell on his head. That got him thinking about the mysterious force that pulled the apple to the ground. And whether it was the same force that kept the moon in orbit around Earth, and Earth around the sun. Newton decided that it was, and that this force, which he called gravity, affects every object in the universe, depending on its mass and distance. <laughs> hey, watch where you're going. So, in 1687, Newton published this universal law of gravitation. It was in a book called the Philosophiae Naturalis Principia Mathematica, usually, thankfully, just shortened to the Principia. Newton also used the Principia to unveil his other major contribution to physics, his three laws of motion, which explain how and why stuff moves. You can find more about them in our Newton's Laws of Motion movie. But physics was just one part of Newton's work. He was also pretty good with numbers. He's one of the inventors of calculus, a kind of math that lets us measure curves and irregular shapes. And then there's Newton's work in optics, the branch of physics that deals with the properties of light. By refracting light through a prism, he discovered that white light is made up of a whole spectrum of colors, which gave him an idea for how to improve telescopes. Back then, refracting telescopes formed images by using lenses to bend light, but a lot of the colors got lost in the process. Newton's reflecting telescope avoided this problem. It used mirrors to reflect light, resulting in a much higher quality image. Yeah, he was eventually knighted, but it wasn't for his contributions to science. Newton received his knighthood as a reward for his work as the master of the Royal Mint in London. He used his position at the Mint to completely reform English currency, and he devoted a lot of time and energy to punishing counterfeiters too. Of course, he'll always be best known for his scientific work. In 1703, Newton was named President of the Royal Society, the most prestigious organization of scientists in England. And when he died in 1727, he became the first scientist to be buried in Westminster Abbey, the famous church where English monarchs are buried. But his long list of discoveries, theories, and laws lives on, becoming the driving force behind the scientific revolution and inspiring future thinkers. Once people realized that the inner workings of nature could be revealed through rational and universally accepted scientific methods, all sorts of doors were opened. 